Welcome back from that report. Now let's get into the crux of the matter as we look at uh, the solutions to the power issue in the country. My guest, Dr. Engineer Idowu Oyebanjo, is a renowned power system engineer. He is a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, FNSE, fellow of the Nigerian Institution of Power Engineers, fellow of the Nigerian Institution of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, and the Chartered Power Systems Engineer from the UK. Engineer Dewu has distinguished himself in the power sector, both in Nigeria and the UK, where he worked meritoriously for over a decade. He is the former Chief Technical Officer, FGN Power Company of Nigeria, appointed by former President Mohamed Buhari for the Presidential Power Initiative, PPI, popularly known as the Siemens Project. He is now the Managing Director Eat Fund Power Engineering Consultants Limited. He is Mr. Power System because he has his BSc, MSc, and PhD in Power Systems from the University of Manchester, United Kingdom. Good morning to you, Mr. Oyebanjo. Thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Thank you very much, uh, Justin. I'm very happy to be with you, and uh, my welcome regards to our viewers all over the world. Thank you. All right, let's just get straight uh, into the, the because there are myriads of challenges, you know, bedeviling the power and the electricity uh, sector in the country. But specifically, let me just put it plainly, what exactly are the main problems with our power sector? Uh, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, just as you have said, there are myriads of problems with the power sector in Nigeria because for the last 60 years or more, we have not been able to have uninterrupted power supply. This must be a real challenge. But something that has been in existence for over 100 years can never, can never be unsolvable. So we have complex issues. But the problem of the Nigerian power sector is cannot be taken <clears throat> in excuse me in isolation of the Nigerian problem. So it has to be viewed in the context of the Nigerian problem. Um, I will just mention the most critical problems because I cannot, in a session like this, enunciate the the juggernaut of conundrum of problems in the electricity sector in Nigeria. But I'll take these very four important ones, and then in the subsequent discussions, we talk about the solutions. One, the most critical problem we have now is the mismatches in the electricity value chain. And that means you have generation of up to 13,000 megawatts installed capacity. I'm not talking of available capacity but installed can be used but we can we have a transmission capacity of uh, about <clears throat> from latest uh, results from TCN transmission company of Nigeria 8,000 mega I'm not talking of the willing capacity which is just about 5,500 that they have done maximum in the last few years we have a distribution capacity that is that could be up to 11,000 megawatts, but we are only able to wheel 3,500 to 4,000 megawatts. So these three numbers are a huge mismatches. The 13,500 megawatt generation, about 5,500 willing capacity of transmission, and about 3,500 getting through the distribution system to Nigerians. So those three numbers are not matching, and they should never have happened. And they occurred due to historical systemic failures. So let me stop on that one. So that is mismatches. The second one, and that's very important, is the lack of effective coordination. Now, this coordination I'm talking about is in various aspects. It's in aspects of governance, is in the aspect of uh, uh, contracts, is in the aspect of uh, um, is in the aspect of what we call protection 
system coordination. So there is lack of protection system coordination. It's in the aspect of monitoring and evaluation. So, so that's the second problem. And this particular problem uh, 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 is key because if you have investments in the power sector not coordinated in a way that one project is tied to the other and they are looked at end to end, you will have a, a network that is disjointed, a power system that is disjointed. The third one that I would like to talk about is the lack of adequate metering. If yeah. you don't have metering in any power system, you are not running a power system effectively. So you are having estimated darkness. You know, you build people for what they didn't consume. This is a huge uh, 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 setback for any power system. So and I'm glad that the current administration, the renewable agenda, has right. clear policies to tackle all of this. The last one is the cost reflective tariff. Okay. Or versus the service based reflective tariff. So I'll leave it, those four, they are critical. Okay. All right. Uh, I haven't mentioned uh, these four issues that you just uh, talked about. Uh, let me just um, quote something that you said uh, in the wake of uh, the, this uh, decentralized uh, you know, power system. You said uh, in one of your write-ups that um, a decentralized power system is the fastest way to develop and industrialize Nigeria. Just last year, uh, President Jinobu signed, uh, you know, given powers to states to actually, you know, get into you know the value chain of um, uh, electricity uh, power systems in the country so how far can the states go in terms of uh, you know selling this stuff to Nigerians per se as per so that we can actually have you know effective and enough efficient and um, uh, adequate power supply to the st at the state levels you know, you talked about several market um, models. You even mentioned the state electricity markets. Can you just uh, maybe throw more light on that, please? All right, thank you. Yeah, you are right. The renewable agenda uh, in the policy document uh, already made provision for the Electricity Act, and it was signed, as you said, uh, night of June 2023. Um, and uh, this as I said, is the fastest way to industrialize uh, Nigeria and make power available and solve the electricity supply problem. So there are so many models that the states can, can, can follow. One, the state governments can establish their electricity market and do something like we saw in Aba, Abia State recently. You remember, I also wrote the article about what happened in, with geometric power as it did the independent uh, power project. So such an example of IPP is a model that states should embark upon. So what Nigerians should be doing now is to knocking on the doors of their state governments and asking look, establish our electricity market. Let us do what Geometric has done. But this is a medium-term solution because it will take about three years mm. without any hindrance, without any uh, uh, Nigerian factor, if I may say, uh, if there's anything like that, without any showstopper, it will take about three years to do such a medium-term solution. So I will talk about a short-term solution that can happen within six months to one year. But this one you have asked me is a medium-term solution where the state can get an enabling environment for private investors. Mm. State do never try to be involved other than to provide the enabling environment okay. and support the private sector. So they will do IPPs like in Naba. It will take about three years. Mm. Another thing is to do what we call franchising. The federal government and state governments will put in their laws policies around franchising the network so that private sector, we, private sector uh, investors will come in, partner with the dispose, uh, uh, and make sure they provide supply to areas of the network. And for areas that there, there is no network, they can, of course, build new networks. 
So that is another area that they can they can do. Then there will be regional grids. Regional grid means that, for example, the southeast region, the states in the southeast region will connect their power grid together. Surpluses in one area will be shared with the others. The states in the northwest, northeast, southwest, and all the other regions will do the same. Now, the beautiful thing is that since we already have this transmission system, it's linking them all. So if there is a surplus from Shiroro or from the northeast or from the northwest, mm. it can easily be, be transferred to demand anywhere that is necessary. But the first of all, it will satisfy the state, it will satisfy the region, and if there is any excess, it can push over or by bilateral uh, contracting, you All can right. have a uh, state power. Okay. So uh, this is what we can do in the medium term. In the medium term. Okay, fine. Yeah. Well, one thing I picked up from what you have just said is that I'm leveraging on the amended Electricity Act. Now, states are expected to collaborate with their neighbors to form regional power markets. You know, I'm sure that will go a long way in actually uh, stemming this issue of um, uh, grid collapses that we've had over time. But um, I just want you to just uh, um, maybe clarify more because uh, sometime uh, the Vice President, uh, Kashim Shatima, or was at uh, the Agbara Light Up Niger project, and there was another one at Enugu. So in all of this Light Up Niger project, what effect are we going to see on power uh, supply in the country? Excellent. This is the short-term solution. This is, the, is what needs to be done today. Actually, not today, uh, before today. So October last year, the Vice President... Uh, flagged off the Light Up Agbara project. And then in February this year, the Light Up Site Southeast project was flagged off. That is what we should be doing right now because you see the 13,000 megawatts I talked about in the beginning as what we have as installed capacity. And we can only get about 3,500 from it to the consumers. The remaining 9,005 up to 10,000 megawatts that we have stranded, we should immediately supply industrial clusters. Mm. And there are private investors that are really ready to work with the federal government, NDPAC, FGM Power Co., the Ministry of Power, and they are all involved in this. What they have to do is to supply the industrial clusters, supply manufacturing sectors at a premium price. And when they get this money, it will create some form of liquidity to bring cash that will be available to now subsidize whatever is supplied currently to all of us residential consumers. That way, we will cover the entire uh, customer base, which is residential, commercial, and industrial. So I must repeat, we should actually continue with this Light Up Nigeria project. This project it, is an in, it is a very, very important uh, solution for Nigeria so that our manufacturing sector can thrive. They can become competitive. The economy will develop as a result. This is the thing to do in the next six to 12 months. Mm. This will create power right. suddenly in the next six to eight, uh, 12 months. So it's a short-term solution. That's what we should be doing now. Okay. So, Idi, uh, uh, for sake of time, now let's really uh, try to uh, try to cover more. Ground. We have just about two minutes before we wrap up now. So, uh, in all of this, now what other aspect are we supposed to look at to really stem this issue of power in the board? Because it is really affecting all aspect of our economy. You know, the the real sector, the manufacturing, like you mentioned, the industrial sector are being affected. What are other key areas? You know, very quickly, do we need to address, you know, maybe in the short or maybe medium or long term, you know, basis. First of all, to set up to, to declare an emergency in the power sector under the leadership of the Minister of Power. This power sector task force should be created. Competence, meritocracy should be the foremost consideration. Set up this task force that will work and make sure that all these things are discussed get sorted out. Now, metering will be very important. 
metering, there is a presidential metering initiative mm. that is coming up. But we have had several initiatives before on metering. And we have CapMai, we have MAP, we, got, we had uh, version 0 and version 1 of uh, a metering initiative in the last administration. This particular one must never be like that. And it should form, it should, it should be directed in a way that will be transparent and people will, will feel the impact, people will get the meters and so on and so forth. The next thing is the cost reflective tariff. I must mention this because you have seen that the base price of gas has just been increased a few days ago. And people talk about cost reflective tariff. You remember what happened when subsidy was removed from oil last year and we are all experiencing the impact. If you don't put meters before putting uh, tariff up, uh, it's not uh, right. a way to run the power system. So what we need to do mm. is to ensure that service-based tariff All should right. be used so that people pay for the band A, okay. 18 to 24 hours. But if they are getting only two hours or six hours and you mm. are charging them for so much, then you cannot still increase it. I can bet you if you increase the tariff, All right. uh, you will never get power to the people without uh, investment. All right, ID, I, uh, we, we have to go for the sake of time, but uh, you, you will agree with me that we cannot really exhaust all of the issues of power in just one episode. We have to bring you back on the show so we can actually, you know, highlight other areas. You know, metering on its own is just a very big topic to talk about. We'll bring you back again on the show, hopefully by next week, so we can do more justice to this um, issue of um, our power supply in the country. My guest has been Dr. Ido Oyebanjo, MD, Eatfund Power Engineering Consultant, Many thanks for being a part of Business Insights for today. Thank you very much. My pleasure. All right. That's the size of the show for this morning. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there.